Happy Monday morning, everybody. Time for a devotion, time to start our week off right in God's Word. Michael Harvey here, and we're actually uh, recording this on Saturday. Uh, Lily's birthday is on Sunday, um, so to preserve some time on her birthday, I'm going to be recording this on Saturday. And plus, it's such a beautiful day. The sun is shining, and uh, what a glorious time to praise the Lord. Uh, Saturday service is going on at this time. And uh, so now as we're um, kind of doing this devotion together, you can also think about people, uh, your, your family of believers worshiping God at the same time that we're doing a devotion. Um, even though I guess I'm taking this little segment of time and, and moving it forward. So whenever you watch this, uh, maybe at that not specific time they're in worship, but you can think about the fact that, that how awesome is this world and this family of believers where um, we are so connected through the worship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that crosses time and space. What a beautiful thing. Um, taking a little break from Deuteronomy, some great stuff in there, but I feel like it, it's in the Old Testament and um, the grace is always uh, right there, but also always in the future. And there's so much that is kind of like um, law, right? In the Old Testament, you can find grace and you know grace is coming in. And that law shows you how important the grace of Jesus Christ is. Um, but, uh, but I think right now, we just needed a message this week of, of grace. Um, but kind of a unique message of grace as God is an awesome, awesome God. And I think sometimes we, we mistake grace um, a little bit. And if you notice in scripture, when Jesus lavishes his grace, it's not like, all right, you have all my love, you have grace, you have forgiveness, Bye bye now. You just sit there. <laughs> that is absolutely not um, the way we see this happening so often in Scripture. Um, and let me give you an example, just one of the examples in Scripture of how this works. And yet people are out and about on this nice, beautiful day. So a little bit of noise. And of course, the wind is always with us. And right now the wind just decided to blow the wrong way. So we're going to be in the book of John and the 21st chapter in the reinstitution of Peter. And I think this will be familiar to a lot of you. And you've read it and, and you probably even noticed this before, but let's just bring it out a little bit more. Um, and of course, we know that Peter denied Jesus three times before the, the rooster crowed in the morning. And that's going to be in our scripture readings this weekend, that whole instance. And um, at the end of that Luke reading that we're going to hear this weekend, it talks about Peter leaving and weeping bitterly. And I don't know if you've experienced that, but I have definitely experienced that, where when I failed Jesus... When I sin, and I feel my sin, I feel that law weighing down on me, I just feel so defeated. Like, God, why would you use me? What use am I to you? How, how worthless am I? Why would you choose to use me? Just kick me off your team, out of your kingdom. Just choose someone that's going to actually do what you ask them to do. And Peter was probably thinking that. Weeping bitterly. What good am I, Jesus? And Jesus was hurt. And I got to think that in some ways, Jesus was probably more hurt that Peter was hurt than because of Peter's denial, his betrayal. The betrayal hurt, but, but the way Jesus shows himself time and time again is he was more concerned about um, Peter's heart because Jesus was dying for that sin of betrayal. So here we are in the book of John where we think about Peter denied Jesus three times and Jesus is going to forgive him and welcome him back three times. And you've probably read this. When they had finished eating this beautiful breakfast on the beach where this amazing catch of fish came in and, and Jesus had already started a fire and had fish roasting, but he says, bring some of yours. And again, again, here's Jesus asking us to participate with him. Jesus didn't need it. He had all the food, but he said, bring some of yours. You participate in this. Your contribution is important. Well, they've finished eating now. And Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? 
Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. There's number one. Do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. And he had asked Peter, before Peter even denied him, he said, when you come back around, I need you to take care of, of your brothers and sisters here. I need you to participate. I need you to feed these lambs. He said that before the betrayal, before the death, before the crucifixion, before the resurrection. And here Jesus is reconfirming that with this man that betrayed him three times, even after pl pledging his life. I mean, this is an ultimate betrayal. Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus asked, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. There it is again, the second time. Um, and and these, these answers that Peter had given, you know that I love you, also reminds me of, of so many prophets in the Old New Testament like Revelation or, or the Old Testament where the angel says, hey, give me an answer to this question I'm going to give you. And the prophet says, you know. <laughs> I don't know, but you know. Um, Peter did know that he loved Jesus, but he probably was questioning it. But Jesus knew that Peter loved him, and Peter knew that. A third time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And in the original languages, I hear that the first two are like a friendship love, and the last one is an agape, a, a selfless love. And, and we could go into all that, but, but the third answer, the third question, do you love me? And Peter was hurt. He was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. <laughs> like, were you there, Peter, when you denied him three times? And, you know, as often happens with humans, we just don't quite put it together right on time, do we? Do you love me? He was hurt that he asked him the third time. And Peter says, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Boisterous, fiery Peter, maybe getting a little frustrated, a little upset. But also, so, so wanted to know Jesus, knew that he loved him, right? And then Jesus said... Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Now, in all three of these times, there was grace being given here. Um, a confirmation of relationship and a grace of, I trust you now, feed my sheep, take care of my lambs. And in that grace, there's a, there's a call to action, a, a following. A, a what do we do with this grace? We don't just sit on it. We don't just... Um, just kind of check in and check out. But God and Jesus calls us to participate with him in that grace. A grace of just, oh, thanks that I'm forgiven. I'm going to go sit and watch TV again. That is grace. But the richer, more vibrant grace is, is a, a recognizing that even though we fail and we're kind of worthless and compared to God, we're like, why would you even use us, God? But the uh, this rich dynamic of grace is that God looks at us and says, I don't want anybody else more than you. My child. And a few seconds ago, we were calling ourselves evil and awful and worthless and, and nothing. And God looks us straight in the eyes with his grace and he says, there's no one else I want but you. But I want you with me. I don't want you in the corner watching TV. I don't want you on the bench. I want you with me. Not only does God show us the grace and say, you are worthwhile, you are enough, you are loved, but he says, I want you on the starting team. I want you right next to me. I don't want people to miss the fact that I've claimed you, that I love you, and that you're worthwhile. They will see that I value you and I love you because you're right there with me. And I hope you can pick up on that and accept that. When we get graced, when we get loved by God and forgiven, it's not like, okay, and now you can rest. It's like, okay, let's get to work together. You call yourself nothing. Jesus calls you everything. 
You say you're worthless. Jesus says you're full of worth. And I'm going to unpack you and show you that you have more worth than you can even imagine. You are loved. And God loves you. So let's uh, praise God and, and uh, just accept that grace. But let's not just accept that grace. Let's live that grace out and be loved by God. Let's join him on his mission and fully receive that grace, knowing that it's not just the grace of, you're okay, Harvey, but you're okay, Harvey, and I want everybody to see that you're with me and that we're okay together and we're on the same team loving this world. So let's, let's close this in a word of prayer as you start your weekend. Guys, I'm going to make it way under 20 minutes this time. <laughs> so some of you might think I'm getting gypped. I should get my 20 minutes. And I was just saying, oh, finally, Harvey. Well, here we are. We'll be at about, you know, 12 or 13 minutes. A little bit of a extra time this week to just realize that you are loved, you are graced, and to take time to just thank Jesus and join him on his mission on your mission together. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us, even when we're worthless. When we feel like we're not enough, we failed you, you claim us, and you want us to be right there with you in your work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, enjoy the week. Join him on his mission, and you are loved. He claims you, he looks you straight in the eyes and says there's no one else I want on my team more than you. You are awesome. Be loved by God this week. Let him love you. Love him back. Have a great week in the Lord. We'll see you next Monday.